For this video, we are going to talk about the classification of crops. And the first question that we are going to answer is, why do we need to classify crops? Remember that agricultural crops are very diverse. And without classification, there will be confusion. So we are classifying crops to have order or for organization. Later in this video, we are going to discuss the different classification of crops. One way of identifying a crop is by its common name. However, it varies from one locality or one country to another. So, to avoid confusion when discussing crops, the binomial nomenclature of plants proposed by Carolus Linnaeus is used for providing the universal name of a certain plant. So, that is what we call the logical naming. So, we are using the scientific names. The language used in this naming system is Latin, since it is a dead language or a fixed language. The botanical system of classification is a hierarchical system. The plants are grouped from the largest to the smallest, and the largest group is the kingdom. Plants are under the kingdom plantae, and the basic unit of classification is the species, while variety is the variation within plant species. So what are the basis of classification of crops? We have growth habit, life cycle, climatic requirement, light intensity requirement, habitat, mode of reproduction, manner of culture, and purpose. Classification of crops based on growth habit. There are four. First is herbs. So herbs are short-sized plants with soft, green, delicate, but self-supporting stem. And they do not have woody stem. Normally, they complete their life cycle within one or two seasons. Second is shrub. So shrubs are medium-sized woody plants that are taller than herbs but shorter than a tree. The characteristics of a shrubs are bushy, hard, and with woody stem. Third are trees. So trees are big and tall plants. They have very thick, woody, and hard stems called trunk. So this trunk produces many branches that bears the flowers, leaves, and fruits. But some trees are branchless, like coconut. So they have one main stem which bears the leaves, flowers, and fruits. Normally, their lifespan is more than two years. Fourth are the vines. So vines are plants without self-supporting stems since their stems are either soft or woody but thin long and weak so they need external support usually these plants have specialized structures that helps them grow vertically those structures are called tendrils classification of crops based on life cycle there are three annual these are plants that complete their life cycle in one year or less or in one season biennial these are crops that require two years or two growing seasons. So, from the term by meaning two, and inial from the word anus meaning year. Third are perennials. So, from the word perennis meaning everlasting, these are plants that do not die after flowering. So, they live from year to year. Classification of crops based on climatic requirement. There are three. Tropical, these are characterized by having an average temperature of above 18 degrees Celsius and they do not have winter season. Temperate, the average temperatures during their warmest months is above 10 degrees Celsius and negative 3 degrees Celsius in their colder months. Subtropical, it is described as the hot and humid summers and with mild to cold winters. Classification of crops based on light requirement. 
We have heliophytes or the sun loving. Helio meaning sun. And cyophytes or the shade loving. Sayo from the word skia meaning shade. So normally, heliophytes have a light saturation of 5,000 foot candles, while cyophytes have a light saturation at 500 foot candles. Classification of crops based on habitat, we have terrestrial or those that grow on land. Aquatic, those that grow on water. Halophytes or halophyte, these are the salt-loving plants. From the word halas, meaning salt. And lithophyte, these are plants that grow on rock or gravel. Or gravel. Lito from the Greek word lithos meaning stone. We also have special classification of plants based on their habitat. We have the parasitic or the parasitic plants. These plants obtain their nutrients from other plants. An example is the rafflesia. They do not have leaves and they are not photosynthetic. Next is epiphytes. So epi means on top of. So these are plants that grow on top of another plant or they grow on another plant. An example is the orchids. So they grow on another plant but they are not parasitic. Lastly is the saprophyte. So they grow in places which in decaying organic matter. Sapro from the word Sapros in Greek meaning rotten or putrid. Classification of crops based on mode of reproduction. First is sexual. So these plants produce seeds or use seeds as the main means of reproduction. While asexual is the mode of reproduction wherein they use the vegetative parts such as the stem, root, or leaves. So, sexual reproduction involves the process of meiosis and fertilization, while asexual does not involve meiosis and fertilization. Classification of crops based on the manner of culture. We have agronomic crops. So, these crops are the field crops. They are grown in the open field. While horticultural crops, these are the garden crops or grown in enclosed areas. Classification of crops according to their purpose, it is further subdivided into three categories, agronomic, horticultural, and the special group. So let us first discuss the agronomic crops or the agronomic category. First are the cereal crops or the grain crops. So these crops are grown for their grains. Examples are rice, oats, corn, sorghum, and wheat. Legumes or pustule, these are grown for their pods and seeds. Examples are mung bean, peanut, lentils, and peas. Fiber crops, they are grown for their fiber which is used in textile and twines. An example, cotton, abaca, jute, rami, and kenaf. Forage or pasture crops, so they are grown for roughage source for animals such as the paragrass, napier grass, and apple apil. Starchy root and tuber crops, these are grown for their enlarged roots and tubers such as the cassava, purple yam, and potato. Sugar crops, so for their sugar content such as the sugar cane and sugar beet. Stimulant crops, so they are grown for their psychostimulant component. An example is that tobacco because it has nicotine. So let us now go to the horticultural category. First are the vegetables. We have the leafy vegetables. So for their leaves, such as the lettuce, celery, spinach, amaranth, and jute. Crucifers, so these are the Brassica and mustard families such as the Chinese cabbage, mustard, and pet chai. 
root tubers and bulbs. So these are grown for their enlarged root and tuber. An example is the sweet potato, onion, garlic, ginger, carrot, and radish. We also have legumes. So these are the string beans, hyacinth beans, winged beans, snap beans, and lima beans. Normally, uh, legumes as vegetables are grown for their pods. Solanaceous. So these are the nightshade family, the tomato, sweet pepper, eggplant, and hot pepper. Cucurbits or the squash family, the cucumber, bitter gourd, squash, chayote, and wax gourd. We also have the malvaceous family or the okra. And the three vegetables such as the sesbanya, the himbabao, and the moringa or the horseradish tree. Other vegetables include sweet and baby corn. Let's now go to the fruits. So we have three fruits such as the mango, apple, citrus, and langka. The nut fruits like pili, cashew, and talisay. Small fruits like pineapple, strawberry, and grapes. For the ornamentals, we have the cut flowers. So these are grown for their flowers, such as the roses, orchids, and chrysanthemum. The cut foliage, these are grown for their leaves. That provides background in floral arrangements, such as the ferns, silum, and palms. Flowering pot plants. So, these are grown in containers for their flowers, usually used for display, such as the poinsettia and geraniums. We also have landscape plants. So, these plants are used for landscaping purposes, such as the blue palm, Fortune plant, the white grass, and Song of India. Foliage plants. So these are grown because of their attractive foliage or leaves, and they may be grown outdoor or indoor. An example, begonia, cadmium, diefenbachia. Turf or the turf grasses. So these are used in lawns or in golf courses. Examples are Bermuda grass. Bluegrass, carabao grass. Next category are the plantation crops. Oil crops. So they are grown because of their oil content, such as the coconut, castor, and olive. Fiber crops, such as abaca, kapok, and buri. So fiber crops can either be agronomic or horticultural crops. So it will only depend on the manner of culture. Beverage crops. So these crops are used for creating drinks. Examples are the cocoa, coffee, and tea. The spices, condiments, and essences, they are grown for their aromatic or pungent characteristics such as the turmeric, black pepper, and vanilla. Latex and resin crops. So these plants are produced because they have the ability to produce resins or latex such as the rubber and papaya. Medicinal plants for their medicinal purposes or medicinal components such as the lagundi and sambong. Let us now go to the special groups or special types. We have the green manure. So these are crops that explode under while still green and growing. Its function is to improve the soil. Example is the sesbanya and glericidia. Catch crop, so these are fast-growing crops that is grown in between rows of the main crop, given that the main crop takes a lot of time to mature. Or, it can be grown as a substitute if the main crop has failed. Examples are pechay and lettuce. Cover crops, these are crops that are grown to provide soil cover, prevent soil erosion either by wind or water, and also to improve soil and control weeds. Example is the centrosema. Trap crops. So from the word trap, 
meaning these crops are planted to protect the main crop. And what they do is that they attract the pests to them. Examples of these are sorghum and sunflower. And yes, they are different from repellent crops. So, repellent crops, they protect the main crop by chasing away the pests such as the marigold and citronella. Companion crops. So, these crops are sown with another crop and harvested separately. Normally, the combination of these crops benefits either or both of the crops. Example is the ipil-ipil and the black pepper. Soilage crops. These are grasses that are grown, cut, and directly fed to the animal. While silage crops are grasses that are grown, cut, fermented, and preserved before being fed to animals. 